Vision Good Life Project. I'm so glad that you found yourself uh, here today. These are a series of informal chats and uh, where we hope to uh, inspire and entertain you a little bit about life here on the Gaspé Coast. And today we're really lucky to be able to go to the cafe at the Douglastown Community Centre and meet up again with Linda Drudy, who's a very well-known uh, Gaspésian artist. Hi, Linda, nice to see you again. Well, a real pleasure to see you, and a real pleasure to be here at the uh, little Doug Art Cafe that they have at the community center. And uh, Linda, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Because for sure I know, I know you, but can you tell other people watching a little bit about yourself and a little bit about uh, this, this, this opportunity that you've had to, uh, to have this exhibition at the cafe? Um, well, I grew up in Douglastown. Um, I paint mostly uh, Gaspesian art um, because I love the place, because uh, how can you not paint the Gaspé? It's so beautiful. There are so many different scenes to paint and uh, so many wonderful people that inspire me in a sense to do paintings. Uh, I. I'm uh, pleased to be here at the cafe. Uh, I am the first artist presenting here, uh, out of many to follow, uh, I'm sure. And uh, I'm quite happy to be here. You know, one of the reasons is I went to school here. Actually, the room I am in it was my grade one classroom. Whoa. And, uh, so being, uh, if I were in, uh, like thinking back to grade one, I would never imagine that I would be uh, exhibiting my paintings here. <laughs> That's really, that really adds a nice uh, part to your, your story. You grew up and here you are uh, as an adult uh, and I see the paintings in the background and they look amazing. So can you tell us, okay, so just tell us a little bit about the paintings and walk us around because I know that we're all looking forward to seeing it. Okay, so I'm going to give you a, a, a fairly quick tour, um, although some paintings might take a little longer to explain than others. So if you look at the painting on top, which is a covered bridge, this is Pont Galipo, and this bridge is in Grand Valley, it's a covered bridge. And back in the 90, early 1900s, there were about, uh, well, over 1,200 covered bridges in uh, the province of Quebec. And the thing that's very special about this is that uh, this bridge is called the Town Bridge, uh, not because they built them in towns, but because of uh, the uh, designer, um, architect, uh, Ithiel Town, who grew up in Connecticut. And so if you look at the design, it's like a crisscross design and uh, and some people say it looks like it wouldn't be very strong, but it is a very strong bridge and it's the most popular covered bridge uh, within Quebec. Uh, mo most of the bridges were built in this style. And um, somebody had asked me the other night why they had so many covered bridges. Well, if they built just a bridge with no roof, uh, it might have lasted about 20 years. But with the roof, it would last probably up to 100 years. So uh, I guess it was well worthwhile. And also it uh, kept the snow off the bridge too. Great. So I'll go on to the next painting, which is a today scene. And uh, the, this is a, a drawer, Mr. Drawer, who is out lobster fishing. Uh, he, he just came in with his catch and I love fishing scenes. Um, my father fished a lot, so I love fishing scenes, although he didn't fish lobster. Any scene with uh, water and fish and mountains is beautiful to me. And then we have down below uh, another today scene, which is Park Corio, uh, the way you would see it today. And this would be Heinen's store right here. And uh, so this little area here is Grand Grève. And uh, a grave is actually a stony beach where they would dry fish. And so when the people first came here to fish, that's how they dried their fish, the, the cod. And uh, in later years, they built uh, fish flakes. And, uh, and today there are very few people still drying uh, uh, codfish on the coast. 
Very interesting. Thank you. So we'll turn to another painting, um, which is uh, the Fruing Company. This is a fish uh, drawing on the flakes. And so it's a very familiar scene to me because my father fished uh, on, on the weekends. And uh, so we always have a lot of dry fish to eat, too much in fact. And, uh, and so anyway, uh, he would put the, the way he would process that is they would clean the fish. And uh, so they would lay the salt in the bottom of the barrel. They would uh, take the fish that was cleaned and, and they would turn the flesh side down. And then they would put salt and then another rare fish and salt and fish. And so they would leave it there for about four days and, uh, and uh, then it would be ready to put out on the fish plate. So my father would put that out every morning before work. And as kids, we would watch to see if rain, if it was about to rain, because we would bring it in to, uh, uh, off the plate so that it wouldn't get wet. And uh, of course, we had to dry it as quickly as possible to make it as uh, tasty as possible. Um, so the fruiting company was there before Hyman ever came. Uh, they were here since the maybe 1770s or something, but, uh, but High, William Hyman uh, came only around 1845. Uh, uh, but they were competitors all through life. Um, this here is a scene of uh, Carter's Hill, although today they call it Carter Street, but right, if, if you know Gatsby at all, they, right now they have steps there. Um, Carter, uh, the Carter family came here around uh, the 1770s. Uh, it was after, uh, you know, they were, uh, the first Carter to come had been in General Wolfe's army. So like many of the people who had been in the army, they were awarded a lot of land. And so he had, uh, a real fine pick. He had something right in the center of town, although it wasn't center town then. And, uh, and uh, so he had this hill here, he built buildings here, he, uh, he built uh, where Motel Plant is today, uh, a house and, and actually, uh, not the first guy, but the second guy. So the house is still standing today. And uh, so he built the first uh, TD post off of the building that the first TD uh, rented. He uh, built this building, which was also uh, a bank at first and then a post office, but uh, he had all kinds of buildings on Main Street. They were very wealthy people and they married into wealth as well. Uh, and so because down on this point, which was O'Hara's point, right, what would be here, which is the parking lot of the Jacques Center, um, uh, there was only salt water, so, so uh, Mr. Carter, uh, sold water to the people who came in on ships and to the businesses down on that point. So we'll move over to another scene, which is just Hyman's store. And it's the Hyman's store the way it looks today. And of course, they always have beautiful, um, a beautiful, beautiful fall colors out in the park. And if for nothing else, it's a worth, a worth a ride just to go see the beautiful colors. Although I know you have that in St. Jules as well. It is a beautiful time of the year for sure. It is, it is. So here we have um, this little place is called uh, Indian Cove or Laos of Sauvage. And so this, this is uh, painted from a black and white picture that was taken around 1910. And uh, so uh, CN was about to come in with the trains in 1911. And so they started sending out their photographers all over Canada to take beautiful pictures or scenes of uh, pictures of beautiful scenes along uh, all over Canada. And so um, obviously this guy uh, had a beautiful picture of uh, of what is now Park Corian. And uh, so if you would go to Park Corian, this would be the walking trail. You would not see the houses. Um, and because the houses are not there anymore. Uh, but it's a wonderful scene. This, this is the uh, Simo house. This here is the, uh, the Dow home. And when I had a gallery on Main Street, a lady came in and she said, I've seen this scene before in a history book. And she said, I, she 
She said, this is my family, and they were out making hay when this guy came around to take a picture. So I think it's, uh, so if you look at this scene down here, it's, uh, it's somewhere out in the park area. I'm not exactly sure where. Uh, and it's a scene of a family uh, uh, splitting the cod and cleaning the cod, and they would put it in the barrels. Um, that's not where they'd salt it, but that's where they would put it when they, it, it was uh, cleaned. And, uh, and so it would always have fam whole families working. Uh, there were so many uh, young children that uh, I see these kids are playing, but so many young kids started going out fishing at the age of seven and, and even, uh, you know, helping uh, clean the fish or carry the fish or whatever. So uh, uh, they grew up uh, a tough bunch of people, I guess, uh, all of the gas Asians, because, uh, uh, because they worked so hard. Wow, it's so, beautiful. Thank you. So we'll move over here to a smaller painting, and it's actually a, a view of Percy Rock, but from Bonaventure Island. And people started settling in Bonaventure Island around the 1770s as well, because these were people who had also uh, fought in General Wolfe's uh, army. So um, what a beautiful place to live. Uh, and of course today uh, it's, uh, it's a park, and uh, there are 60,000 gannets who live on the island, and I think 218 different kinds of birds. So, uh, such a beautiful place. We're blessed to live here. So, we'll move over here to this is another park uh, for y'all uh, picture. It's called uh, uh, St. George's Cove. And uh, so, there were some Langleys who lived out here, uh, and this is so small but it's the catholic church but i i love it because of the scene i love i love the rock the rocks uh, in there but i love that there's a boat and, and it shows that they would dry their nets uh after um they would dry their nets so when they came in from shore and uh, i guess it would have to because the salt was so hard on the nets and so we can look here at um at um, Gatsby Main Street. And uh, so again, uh, as I mentioned, Carter and uh, Mr. Patterson who rented that store as well, but in later years when Mr. Carter died, uh, Mr. Patterson brought water from his wife. So, so uh, um, there, there have been, there's a long line of uh, owners uh, since the beginning, but uh, certainly the Pattersons and Carters and Askies, and there's just so many old family names in Gaspy. Uh, so, anyway, couldn't name them all now. Um, here we go uh, to uh, painting again uh, today's scene out in Park Morion. It's just somebody who had been out fishing on the wharf. It's a very popular place to fish for mackerel, and he was cleaning the mackerel, and I thought it would be uh, a nice scene to paint. And if you look down below, uh, this is Indian Head, uh, very close to where we grew up. And uh, well, you know, a 10 minute drive, I guess. Um, and it's always a lovely spot and uh, the tourists absolutely love it uh, because of the Indian Head and the, the brush that's growing there looks like a mohawk. It's a wonderful scene. So we can move over here. Very good. You, your painting is amazing. Well, thank you, Mary. Thank you. Wow. Now, Mary, this is uh, <laughs> down around your way. This is Mr. Cochran's Curious Cows. <laughs> <laughs> That's really nice. So, uh, so I've gone to his place to, uh, to visit his farm, and they are such friendly people, and it was so nice to uh, to be able to go and see the animals and his uh, two horses, the twin horses. And so anyway, I find it neat. Uh, I'm not used to uh, these animals, so it's so neat when the cows, they all start coming, you know, there's some coming from a distance too, so it's really nice to see. And this painting here is a painting of the Shigawak Fair, which is, uh, I think uh, this year was the 111 year for it mm -hmm. and uh, so it started I believe in Bonaventure 
But uh, so the Shiguek Fair has been going on for, uh, well, the whole, the whole uh, uh, fair with the animals and judging the animals uh, has been going on for 111 years. But I like, I, I like to see the old scenes of the wagons and uh, the horses that are so nicely outfitted and uh, and they're and so this was a judging and there were people going around in the uh, corral to be judged a mr wiley i believe and here we have a scene next door to where the shigalak fair takes place and it's just the bales of hay and uh, um, it's not something we see as much here right in gatsby so uh, so i love it and these are my little girls mary Oh, your chickens. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, you did a wonderful job on them. Aren't they beautiful girls? <laughs> They're beautiful. And I know that they all have a name. They do. They do. Peggy Sue, Ellie Mae. <laughs> I can't remember them all. <laughs> so we'll move over here. To another scene, actually, that's quite close to your house. This is uh, at the uh, uh, bluegrass uh, fairgrounds. So this is the old Willet House. Very nice. And uh, so I just, I, I like the old scenes. You know me. Yes. Uh, and so this is a print uh, of a painting I've done. And it's just Percy. And uh, one thing I, well, everybody loves the, uh, the house. Uh, yeah. uh, owned, uh, that was once owned by an artist. Um, but there's a little bit of history that a lot of people don't know. It was a Dr. H.A. that owned that at one time, and uh, he and his wife were the people who bought the bells for the Percy Church. And uh, so I, I just like the colored stone down there. I think it's a beautiful beach. Uh, all the beaches in that area are very colorful, with very colorful stones. Wow. So, the next painting we have is a very old scene of uh, a Douglas Down church. And uh, what I like about it is that uh, there are two nuns working out in the garden. And, uh, and so nuns were uh, given certain tasks. Some taught school and some did the cooking, some did the cleaning, and there were some that did the gardening. I think you, if you had been a nun, Mary, you would have been out in the garden. Yes. <laughs> you know me well. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> so we will move on. Um, the uh, top, the top painting is uh, is Gatsby, and actually, this road here in Gatsby. Uh, was built in 1970 because that's when the year of uh, the year that Park for Young opened and uh, and so they thought we were going to have so many people going into the park that they would need much wider highways so uh, they this is the reason why this is built but uh, and so if you I'm not sure how often you come to Gatsby but uh, there's a little area just on this side now on the way side of that and it's uh they're so Canada okay, so yes. um uh, and they call it uh O'Hara's Point. O'Hara's Point was really like this would be kind of where the shopping center would be on the left hand side so they actually went across the, stro uh, the street to rebuild um but O'Hara's Point is beautiful today as well. So we can take a look at the last painting that I have here. Um, and it's a scene in Mall Bay, a scene of fishing boats. Uh, the men had been out and they were back in, although I see there's no rope or anything left, so I, I think it might be the end of the season, maybe. Um, so anyway, uh, the buildings on the side are freezers to keep the fish in, because years ago, uh, first years ago, they used to sell it from send away salt fish, and uh, in later years, like in the 50s, they started uh, uh, putting the fish on ice and selling it and shipping it to Montreal so it would be fresh. And that was very, very popular as well. Uh, oh, one more over here. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see it very well, but the nuns did not always work hard. Sometimes they, took it easy and they went skating 
And I did this one just for fun to show a lighter side of the sisters because sometimes they are talked very harshly about. But, um, but you know, uh, somebody had bought one of my cards and they said it reminded them so much of when they were younger because the sisters used to go skating on the ice or on the river uh, below their place when she was younger. So she had quite a laugh over, her paint, uh, over the painting. She said, uh, just found it quite fun. Um, so uh, you had asked, uh, before when we were talking of uh, why uh, maybe I paint the scenes I do. I painted a lot of the uh, scenes of Park Oreo uh, about two years before um, they celebrated uh, the opening. And uh, I, growing up, uh, my parents used to talk about uh, Park Oreo and uh, coming in and, and they, heard, uh, they would hear stories or read about it you know, that the people were being expropriated. I think maybe 245 families or something like that. And, uh, and so they, uh, when I was maybe like six years old uh, or seven, I would hear my parents talking about that. And, uh, and so they, uh, we got to know some of the people that were expropriated because they had to move somewhere. So they came, some came to Douglas Town. And, uh, so I found it very sad. I, I knew that houses got burned down and I knew that uh, some people were, uh, well, I didn't know all the stories. I just knew that some people uh, didn't really leave there before because they could pay their taxes and they had everything they needed there. Uh, so um, when I got older, like, well, I'm just saying like maybe 15 years ago, I started to get to know these people and heard their stories and there were very, very sad stories and uh, and I grew up under the impression that maybe their homes were kind of run down but they had, when I started seeing the photographs, they were beautiful. I can only imagine how sad they were to me. So, and, and like, if I move away from home, I would come back and uh, even if I sold my house, the whole village is still here, but for them, there was nothing left. So, um, so I wanted to paint these paintings to show people the beauty of uh, the Gaspar Sea and, and the park area. Um, so I guess maybe that's all. I maybe we are running out of time too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Linda, like I, I've so enjoyed your work because it looks like from where I am right now, just to, because I mean we're not we can't see it up close as well. But it looks like they're pictures. You actually took pictures and brought them to life. But when you, when I'm, I read, you know, like I have to say, my God, no, she picked up a paintbrush and brought these scenes of gas fusion to, uh, to life. It's just been beautiful. And another thing, we've got to, uh, to have a history lesson as well. So there really is a story behind every painting and it makes them so much more valuable and so much more interesting. Linda, your exhibition is going to be on the, uh, at the cafe until when? Um, I think it's done on the 21st, or it has to, uh, maybe the 20th, because I have to be out of here by the 21st. Uh, okay, of October. There's another one coming in okay. right after. And uh, Linda, another thing, if somebody's seen one of your paintings here today and they're interested in one of them, or if they would like to commission you to do a, a painting for them, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, they can get in touch with me on Facebook, uh, it's Linda Drody, or um, I can give my, my email address, uh, which is ldrody, D-R-O-D-Y, at globetrotter.net. Um, okay. So, so I used to give my phone number because I hardly ever check the messages. <laughs> no, that's okay, Linda. What I'll do is I'll add that information at the end of this, uh, this video. Okay, and, and maybe... Maybe Pardon? you can uh, put my website uh, sure. email address. Uh. Sure, because I mean, your work is just, well, and I'm not just saying that, I really mean it. It, it is, it's, we can all be very proud as Gaspesians to have you giving us this, these views of Gaspesian life. It's almost like you're taking them out of a storybook on the Gaspé coast. And uh, before we go, there's someone behind uh, the camera who's been doing the work, uh, filming you this afternoon, Anne Nobert. Uh, I'd like to say hi to you. And Anne, can you maybe, I know that you uh, work a lot, you've been part of the, uh, 
the, the group is that. I switched the camera. Hello. Hi. Yeah, you're part of uh, the group that uh, organized this exhibition for Linda. So can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? So I'm Anne Nobel and I work for Vision Gaspé Percé now uh, here in based in Douglas Town. And can, can you hear me with the Yes, background? I can hear you. Yes, okay. I can. So, and we had this idea with Isabel Martin and Estelle Norroy from the Douglas Town Community Centre to turn the living room and cafe area uh, into a gallery because the, the walls were barren. <laughs> and so it adds a lot of atmosphere and gives the space a soul. I know Isabel is really happy to have painting, paintings up on the walls. And so the, the aim is really to showcase local artists Anglophones and Francophones to reflect the village, the reality here. And, and if, the, if the artist is, for example, really just Francophone, it's uh, to translate, uh, for, for example, everything that Linda has done today. Uh, we, we feel like the English community doesn't have as much access to, to that as the French people do. So it would be to translate such little tours as well. So it's also giving access to more art, giving the English population here more access to art. I, I think it's wonderful. And I'll look forward to seeing more of the artists that uh, you, you have, uh, whose art you have on display. So girls, I thank you very, very much. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Linda, so much for letting us come in uh, to the cafe and seeing your work and seeing what you do. And let you know, like I say, we'll look forward to um, seeing you all again. And for you, who's uh, been able to watch this, sorry, go ahead, Linda. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to say, I, I work for the Gaspersy uh, Literacy Council. And so what we want to do uh, after showing all the paintings, I want to encourage um, parents and grandparents to tell their stories to their children and grandchildren. Make sure that you tell them your stories. Tell them it over and over and over again because that's the way they'll remember it. And it, your, if you think that your story is not important, it's very important to them. They don't realize it now, but they will realize it when they get older because it's who they are. Whatever you experienced in life, it, it, uh, it uh, affects them in, in ways and they will better be able to understand themselves. So not only will you be teaching them all this history, but they'll be able to understand the way they are better. And what it means, I, yes, for sure. And because it's our stories that make us who we are. And uh, as Gaspesians, we need more of the Gaspesian stories. We need more, we need to understand uh, more of our heritage and our history and culture. I think those are very wise words, Linda. Thank you so much for adding that to uh, this. So again, go ahead. Thank you for having us. Yeah, I'm, being here with you. Yes, very, very good. And we'll look forward to seeing you again. So bye for now, girls. And uh, for all of you who've been uh, watching this, I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that you'll uh, come back and uh, see our, our next uh, chat. And until next time, let's find a way to look after each other here on the Gas Bay Coast. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome.